Hello, creative people. Welcome to Creative Conversations. My name is Hollis Citron, and we are so happy that you have chosen to spend this hour with us. So a little background, um, I am owner and founder of I Am Creative and Express Yourself Publishing. And my mission that I just wanna shout from the rooftops is to expand the societal definition of creativity beyond a pencil and a paintbrush and empower people, especially adults, to own their talents that come in so many different forms. So the beauty of this space is that I get to talk to people that have all different kinds of jobs, hobbies, and interests. And we get to have a conversation about their experiences and perspectives, all centered around three questions. One, how do you define creativity? Two, how do you incorporate it into your life? And three, why do you think that it's important? And then we have a free-flowing conversation and we see where it goes. So I had the opportunity to speak to entrepreneurs as young as 13, doctor, lawyer, real estate agents, biologists, and so many more. And by sharing their stories, we get to explore the space of expressing yourself, actually giving yourself permission to take time for your interests and to explore possibilities. And by doing all of this and incorporating it into your world daily, you will feel more empowered, connected, and dare I say, happy. So my inspiring guest for today is LaTroy Woods. He believes we are all here to share a problem and this is where your potential lies. Most people are living the dream of someone else. Getting the body to follow the instructions of the mind is the road that leads to riches. His life's work is to create awareness in his community and have a conversation about human potential, growth, and awareness. Possibilities surrounded the person who is looking. Welcome to the space, LaTroy. Thank you for having me today. I'm so happy that you're here. This is going to be such a rich conversation. Yeah, I'm excited because you know by now, many conversations that we've had already, uh, that's where all the magic happens, right? You talk long enough and the stuff comes out. It does. It <laughs> does. Do you want to add anything to the, I know as we talk, things are just going to unravel, but is there anything that you want to add now to your bio before we get started? You know what? I, I think that I'm really not any different than the next person. It's just really coming to terms with being inside of your own skin and being comfortable and knowing what this body is, mm. how to get it to do what we want it to do, as you were saying in the bio. But, you know, just really taking a step back and just stopping sometimes what we're doing. We're headed in the wrong directions. We're focusing on our senses. But this thing you call creativity, what is that, you know? And how can we use that to make our lives better? Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And this is where this conversation is going to get, um, yeah, it's going to get real and rich. So, um, but I love what you just said, which I just need to mention now is that being inside your own skin and being comfortable in it. I mean, that's really everything, isn't it? I think it is. It's not something that's I believe this conversation we're going to have today is not something you learn in institutions. Um, it's not taught in households. It's we're taught the outside, but no one's taught the inside. And how can you be taught that if no one really knows what it is? Um, it's not a practice. It's not something that you have to learn how to do. I believe it's something you have to remember. And then once we get out of the way, our true nature begins to just show itself. Hmm. Once we get out of the way... Yeah. Okay. So let's start with the would you rather question and then we'll dive into the first and then we'll see where it goes. So LaTroy, would you rather be forced to listen to the same 10 songs for the rest of your life on repeat or watch the same 10 movies for the rest of your life? Probably listen to the same 10 songs. Uh, I'd rather engage with sound instead of television. Mm hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that's it's kind of like I could have gone either way with that. But I kind of um, my daughter and I have a routine where we watch um, a romantic comedy every night. 
before going to sleep and we could watch the same ones over and over again. That's when uh, my husband and son come in and they're like, oh my God, you're watching that for like the hundredth time. <laughs> it's like watching that same movie over and over that it takes like a month to watch because for me, I fall asleep uh, at movies. And so I can watch one movie, it might take me a month. I get like 10 minutes in, and then the next night is like maybe 12 minutes into it <laughs> and so on and so on. <laughs> I have a friend like that too. She's like, as soon as it goes on, she just falls right asleep. <laughs> so, okay. So Latroy, let's dive into the first question. So um, how do you define creativity? You know, I'm creativity is a new conversation for me, but it's not. So I can recall back to maybe the age of nine or 10. So I grew up in the military and my dad was in the army and we moved about every two to four years. And my earliest recollection of my creativity was when we lived in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in my room as my parents were. My mom was cooking dinner. My dad was on the recliner watching television. My siblings, I don't know where my brother and sister were. Um, but I remember being in my bedroom. And there was no television in the bedroom, but I had my journals and I had my books and I was writing. And I found myself getting lost in that place. Mm -hmm. And fast forward 30 five years later, here I am doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think that's something that we all have inside of us to, to create, you know, um, even just look at the word creativity to procreate, to be born, to grow, increase, arise, to bring forth. We're, we're here to put something out into the world, something way bigger than we can ever understand, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And so what, going back to that memory, which is very clear, it's very specific in what you were seeing, when you had these journals um, or these books, these were just empty books and you just started writing, like freeform writing? Yeah, I just remember just writing just my thoughts, really, just writing short stories you know, and now in retrospect that I find myself doing the same thing is kind of uh, surreal in a way because I go back and read sometimes the things I write on paper and it's as if I don't even remember what I put on paper. Mm. As if when I get into that creative space, as if something has taken over and it's doing the creating and it's not me doing the creating. And I, I don't know if you like uh, know when you get in the zone and yeah. you find yourself getting lost in whatever craft that you're doing, like almost like you lose yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that, um, you know, the popular term now is to say that state of flow. But um, yeah, it's kind of like an outer body experience, uh, I would say, because it's it, it's you do I, I get lost in that space. And then um, all of a sudden look back and it's like, whoa, you know, how did that, <laughs> I did that? <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing, huh? Yeah, it just feels, feels so good. It's like timeless and um, it's a timeless space. You know, it's almost as if when you get out of the way, then your true nature can express itself for what it really is. We're not, we're not put, placed in ideas or expectations or identities on nothing we're just being the very thing that we're supposed to be mm -hmm. so when you found yourself at this age of nine or ten and you were just writing um so this had never happened prior to this is that right yes mm -hmm. so did it continue from that point on were you like this feels good and it just that was your your thing or one of your things for expression um, you know, I would say, yes, I think we have very many different creativities. I don't think it's just one. And so I never really explored much of that part of my creativity. And, you know, getting older and getting out to the world and doing what we call adulting, 
which really isn't adulting. It's just still me being that nine year old kid, but <laughs> learning that, you know, I, I thought all these things were happening to me in life, Hollis. And like, wow, my life is bad. My parents got divorced. You know, all these circumstances end up happening. You know, my sister, after my parents got divorced, shortly after that, my sister got raped. And like, just all these things happening, right? Mm. Um, and the story that I began to build, but there was a lot of these things that were happening because they just were happening, but they were actually building me into the greatness that I was supposed to be in life. Um, it was a part of my story. And as I began to acknowledge these things that life isn't bad or good, it's just winning and learning. And as I began to go down this path of who am I, what am I, my creativity is to, even to this day has begun to express itself at higher levels because I'm understanding this whole thing, creation, right? This whole word creativity, creation. Like I get a choice in that actually. Mm-hmm. I get to choose how I want creation to look for me. I get to choose that reality of creating. Yeah. Uh, when you were talking before about um, like building stories, um, you know, it just made me think of the whole thing of where, you know, you could be a victim or, and cause there's so many times people play out the story of, well, this happened. Will that happen? This is why I can't do that because this happened. Um, instead of like you're saying, which I think is kind of like, I don't, I don't you kind of have, I don't know, it, you have to grow into that of, you know, is it bad or is it good? I mean, did that come naturally to you or did, is that something you really had to kind of, I, I don't like the word work, but I'm just saying to work on. I would probably choose the word surrender for me. That's how I fell into it. Okay. Um, I should say that's how I fell into myself. So 20, 25 plus years of living outside of myself, you know, was climbing the corporate ladder, right? That's what we're taught to do. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, make as much money as I can so I could go buy as much stuff as I can. Nothing wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, go on as many nice trips, associate myself with as many people of worth, whatever that meant for me at the time. And this was called life. And so at the end of the day, living outside of myself, I had nothing left for myself. So I was just going through the motions. Like I wasn't even expressing anything as a human being. I was just making money and buying stuff. And then I was going to die, um, which led me to four years ago when I was going to commit suicide. And then that's when creation showed itself to me. Mm-hmm. Laying in bed motionless, I remember almost that drama hesitation of when you see, you know, the pitchfork devil on one arm and, you know, the halo God on the other um, is exactly what happened to me. Wow. And I remember the chatter. It had always been there in my life, the chatter, the noise, the distractions. And that voice was just constant in that moment of me being motionless in my bed and just telling me I'm not worth it. You know, things, You've heard a lot of people. Maybe you're better off not being here. And then the other voice, and it wasn't even voices. It was just, I kind of heard them as language in English, but it was like I was being spoken to within myself, said everything's going to be okay. And in that moment, something happened. A light switch turned on, Hollis, and the whole world turned on, and I realized the world was inside of me. Wow. And that's when creativity, that's when my creativity began. Wow. Thank you for sharing that um, personal story. Um, As you were talking, I'm thinking like, what is the period of time that all this happened in? Because it's, I'm just curious. It's it's like that dramatization where almost like a movie, like you hear that chatter, you're laying there, you hear that chatter. There's that, like, like you said, the devil and the angel, but then it, it like switched. Like how long do you even have a gauge of how long of a period of time that that was? So it happened over about an eight to nine hour period. Mm -hmm. Now, when I went inside of myself and I remember being motionless in bed, all time got lost. Yeah. Like I was experiencing 
the world from the inside. It was something I fully can't explain. It's almost like, how do you know what chocolate ta- cake tastes like if you've never tasted it? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you have to let somebody taste it so they can experience it for themselves. Like, trying to explain the color red to a blind person. Yeah. It was something that even to this day, like, I know it to be the truth. But I still fully can't explain what happened. And I remember laying there. It was just one of these days where uh, it was like a, it was in the fall time. And it was like close to Thanksgiving. But it was nice outside, but it was snowy. So it was almost like I could go outside without a jacket, but I needed a sweater. And it started to snow. And the snow didn't even look like snow when it was coming down. It was as if like stars were falling from the sky. It looked like crystals, like Something happened to me when that light switch turned on inside of me that to this day, like I know what real wealth means, like what it means to wake up every day. Like that's the blessing. Uh, Everything else is just icing on the cake. And I actually get to go out my doors and create my life exactly the way I want it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like that, that word again, surrender that just came up for me. Like you totally surrendered and it just, it just opened up this whole beautiful glistening space. It is. And I, I know I, I got to commend you for what you do on this show with this topic, creativity, how important it is for people to be able to express themselves, right? How comfortable can you be in your own skin without outside validation? Can you really be yourself 100% of the time? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. But yeah, I think the beauty of it, I mean, I I just love this, this space because I get to talk to so many incredible people and hear these different perspectives. And when at one time I was in a, like a meditation and this, this quote just came to me that creativity is not cute. It's necessary. And that just, you know, besides everything else that I'm doing, it just like hit me really strong because I feel like it gets so belittled and it gets like, oh, that's so nice that you, you get to do that crafty thing or, oh, that you're creating. Oh, there's such a disparity between like the whole craftiness, quote unquote, and people who show in galleries and people who are famous and all this kind of stuff. But there's such an empowerment in knowing that, everybody has access to it. Like you're saying, it's like turning on a light switch and everybody has access to it. And when your light switch goes on in whatever form of expression that is, whether it's sitting around the business table or it's cooking or it's writing or it's rollerblading, you know, doing, um, being an athlete, your problem solving. I mean, all this kind of stuff, it exists within everybody. And it, it just makes life, your life, like you're living So I want to, maybe you kind of made me think of something. So when I came out of that experience, Hollis, I was given this vision. And so when this vision was given to me, I don't know how long I, it felt like I blinked my eyes Mm -hmm. and then it was over, but I don't know the whole concept of time that was taking place during these visions that were given to me. And my whole life, now we're going back to this whole movie scene thing again, right? Mm -hmm. My whole life was shown to me in like the blink of an eye. And so prior to this, I got to give you the backstory a little bit. Prior to this event happening, I was headed towards divorce. My finances were in ruin. I hated my job. You know, and I made decent money, but I just didn't like my job. And at the end of the day, I hated myself. And Mm -hmm. so... I didn't realize I had planted all these seeds over time. And in this particular day and moment, all those seeds have broke the surface and were reaching for what they were. The anger broke the surface, the insecurities, they all broke ground. And I had to show up. Myself was showing myself myself. Yeah. And I was shown that vision. I was shown what my whole life looked like. And so the creativity is a little different for me because my whole life was shown to me exactly what it looks like. And now all I'm doing is working backwards. I'm just moving towards what was shown to me. So my marriage was saved. It was flourishing. I was living, I had abundance around me, many homes. I was traveling the world, speaking on 
grand stages, I was solving a problem of helping people save themselves from themselves. And because of it, the whole world was mine. And I was shown this, my home being paid for, I still had 15 years left to pay my mortgage, all these things. And this has been over the past three and a half years since this has happened. All these things have happened, Hollis, one by one by one. Hmm. And so I have no, no doubt to deny what this thing is inside of us, this creation, this creativity. And I move towards that every single day because I know it to be my truth. Wow. I mean, that whole idea of the vision, would you say, I mean, is it like a, is it a guardian angel thing? Is it, do you have any idea of a way to explain? You know, how it was presented? I think everybody calls it different. I call it God. Yeah. Some people might call it the universe. Some people might call it energy. But when you know hear the terms like, you know, all of life is happening inside of us, all of life is subjective. I find that to be very true because nothing happens outside until it happens inside. Yeah. And so that means the power of choice that we've been given. Yeah. I get to choose what to create every day. I get to wake up and plant an idea. I get to put a creativity inside of me, plant a seed. Yeah. And then watch it grow. Like, and so like begin to understand like, okay, does it matter our circumstances? Does it matter what happened? What's happened? Like all that goes out the door when you understand what we are, Hollis, and what yeah. creativity really means. You know, it's not a, I don't think creativity is a tangible thing. I think it's more of an intangible that becomes tangible. Mm. I like what you're saying. I mean, about the seeds, because it's true. I mean, it's it's basic and it's so deep and so true. I mean, you are what you think about. You are what you believe. You plant those seeds and it has time to, to grow and um, it can bloom <laughs> into something that's you know, empowering, or it can kind of, you know, be a poison ivy. It, it is what you plan. Uh, you know, I think the real, and I can't remember, I think it's uh, the death of Ivan Illich. Um, I can't remember what book it's in, but so this guy's kind of just living the life he thinks he's supposed to live and soon realizes because he's not present with himself that he took advantage of everything in his life and that he had it all wrong. That at the end of his life, he cared about the wrong things, but now here he is on his deathbed and the thing that he wants to create is now too late to create. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you hear so many stories about that, about, you know, people at the end of their life and what they say, things that they wish they did, things that they wish they weren't scared about, um, all that fear so much, so much, I, you know, I don't know if you agree on, on that, um, is fear. It's fear-based. I find I find that in what I do is that so many people will say, well, I can't do that because it's something either that they've been told in the past that they're not good at and they've chosen to believe it or that they're too scared. Um, well, I went to school for this, so that means that I can't do that. So even though I want to try it, I'm not going to try it because that somebody else is better at it than I am. You know, I've had some very personal experiences with uh, people in my life who've been able to create at some pretty high levels with people who are creating at some very high levels, like the one percenters in the world. And it's, it's funny because what we're taught from the very moment that we come out of the womb is we're taught the outside is the reality, right? Like we need to be doing, we got to do, 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 do. But at some point you got to realize there's another side of the coin. There's always another side of something. And how do we know anything in its entirety if we don't know all of it? So at some point, we keep going through our life. We go through adolescence, you know, get into high school, get out, go to college, maybe get out to the world. But because we've been doing for so long, we forgot to become. Who, who am I? Mm -hmm. Who do I need to become? And through that process, as you begin to figure out, right, what I want to create, what do I want? Who am I? like this creativity that this expression that wants to come outside of you that you almost lose yourself. And as you begin to gain success in your life, you realize at some point, and hopefully you do, people do realize that 
I have to become the person I have to become because you may get all the stuff you want, but there's still something always missing at the end of the day because mm-hmm. you're really not creating. You're just doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. I love that awareness of, um, I like what you just said, where you're doing, 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 and you forget to become. You know, I've had the opportunity, like, you might not know it, but I used to be very timid and shy, Hollis. Mm. You couldn't get me to say hello. Mm -hmm. But because of, in my lifetime, I know that I'm supposed to create something, my own thing. Um, Either I'm going to sell myself on myself or somebody else is going to sell me on their creativity. Mm-hmm. And I did that for 25 years and um, it wasn't for, it wasn't for me. I finally had to wake up and make a decision, right? How hard it is for people to make a decision to create the thing they want or have someone else to tell you what you're going to create for yourself and to be on platforms now to where you can bring your message, you know, like the mic, how powerful it is. You can see it over the yeah. centuries, get it on our stages, the platforms, right? How yeah. powerful our voice is, like to bring our creations into physicalities in our homes and as products, but then also to bring that creativity to the world and these messages um, to open people up to themselves. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I can relate totally to um, the shyness. I, yeah, I. I could speak, but I would turn every shade of purple and it wasn't a pretty shade of purple. It was very blotchy. (laughs) (laughs) It was a blotchy shade of purple. And um, because of that, I hid uh, a lot. I'd want to avoid many situations because if I like somebody, they'd say hi and I could turn purple, you know, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to have, you know, my feelings, my emotions just be there for everybody to see. Um, but as I got older and situations presented themselves and it's kind of interesting, it's that whole, the way things unravel and you don't always know, I guess, what you're meant to be, um, teaching situations started presenting themselves and I'm thinking, what me, (laughs) me stand in front of people and speak and do all this. And yeah, it started happening and I found that I was good at it and I, I liked it and I just started to have an awareness, um, like you were saying, like to not be a reactor when I would be speaking in front of a class or in front of a bunch of adults in a professional development. Um, and if I would feel my face starting to get warm, I'd say, you know, it just happens once in a while. I'm not going to die if I start to turn many shades. So don't worry about it. And let's just move on. And people laugh and it's over. So, um, yeah, it's just becoming more, like you said, comfortable with myself from the inside. You know, maybe we could dive a little deeper down this rabbit hole. So why why is creativity so important? Okay, so because we're alive, we have these things called relationships. We have people, right? We have to deal with people. Whether you want to say you're an introvert or extrovert, we have to deal with ourselves and we have to deal with other people. Now, this means if you're married, how can you make your marriage the best? You have to create it the way you want it to be. Mm-hmm. Now, whatever ideas that you've had in your head about relationships, um, you can always turn that around and create the relationship you want from planting a seed, right? So this creativity it's a part of life. You don't get a choice whether you do it or not. Right. You're, you're creating all the time. And for most of us, we're creating destruction for ourselves all the time. Yeah. Yes. Um, I often tell a story uh, that um, in this space that uh, a friend of mine who was always kind of like on a search for her creative outlet and took, you know, from the societal definition of what creativity is, taking a lot of art classes and different things like that. Um, And long story short, in the end, she liked things, but it just kind of didn't resonate. But when she realized that 
her profession, which is teaching, and she's an incredible, incredible second grade teacher, like out of the box thinker, just does amazing things with them. When she realized that teaching was her creativity, was her expression, she's like, I felt like a weight was lifted off of me. She's like, I, I found it. And it was there the whole time, but she was looking outside of herself. That, that's beautiful when you have people share stuff like that with you because creativity isn't something you do. It's something that we are, right? And um, it's our whole intention of being alive. Yeah. It's, it's what we are. Like We are creativity. Like we were a creativity, you know? And so uh, there's, and I think it's from the book, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty avid reader. So I, I reference to a lot of uh, quotes, right? Um, you could like learn from the history of what people have done before us. So I don't have to make those mistakes and maybe open up to my creativity in a different way. Mm -hmm. But I think it was from the secret is a feeling uh, by Novell Goddard. And he talks sure. about uh, of the many books written only creates confusion. So as I begin to open up to my creativity more, one thing that opened up after my suicide was I open myself up to meditation, mm -hmm. which is also synonymous with prayer. Now, these are touchy subjects for people sometimes, especially when you say prayer or God, because they associate it with outside stuff. But I tell you what, learning how to sit down with myself and do nothing to see what's inside of me so I can see what's outside of me and what's real and what's not real has been a game changer. Yeah. Learning how to sit with yourself. And yeah. and it sounds so like, right, how 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 can sitting down with yourself like really do anything? But you think about it, we, yeah. we spend so much time like think about when you go to the grocery store, like everyone's on their phone, you go to the doctor's office, like the minute silence happens, people feel uncomfortable, they're itching in their skin. How can you even develop your own creativity? when you're so focused and distracted on the outside all the time. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like, you know, what are people going to think? Da, 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 da. And it's so, so true. People do get very uncomfortable with the silence. And who is it that says, um, my husband is on here, Arthur, if you remember, um, when, um, you know, when you're quiet, that whole, you know, they say when you meditate and, you know, count to 10, and don't think about anything. And if you think about something, then you have to start over again. <laughs> so it's not easy because sitting there quietly and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, did I do the wash? Oh shit, I gotta go back again. <laughs> <laughs> or you get to nine and you're like, oh, you know, um, thank you, yes, Jack Canfield. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's, it's hard to keep your mind actually quiet for very long. You think about it, the one thing that we all enjoy very much is music. And you really think about how music's created. Music's created because of the silence in between the notes. Ooh, did you come up with that? I didn't. I, um, I, but it's a great, it's a great <laughs> saying, but that's how music's created is between the silence. And so you got to really begin to open yourself to really understand what creativity is. Yeah is you got to understand the things that are happening between the things so you can see what they really are. Yes, I love that. What is happening between the things? It's really paying attention. It's paying attention and listening. And a lot of people don't listen. I mean, how many people really stop and listen? Not very many, right? Not very many. Even, like, so you... You begin to get aware, right? You begin to know what you didn't know, but then being aware that we will never know anything, that we don't know anything, so that you could keep creating and learning. Because once <laughs> you think you know it, you don't learn anything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in philosophy class, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the the I was on a on a show the other day, and the I can remember saying the word universe, right? Uni meaning one, verse meaning song, one song. We're all singing the same song, right? Mm. And so, yeah, just being on this platform, talk, talking about this subject, creativity, just living in the moment, 
being right present right here where my feet are so I don't miss out what's not going on, the opportunity that's right in front of me, the creativity that's taking place, the creation that's going on around me because prior to like me being aware of all this stuff about myself, I was always in my past. I was in the thoughts of yesterday or in the thoughts of tomorrow, which both don't even exist. So I was never able to create the life I wanted to because I was somewhere else. Yeah. Well, the formal definition of creativity is the formation of an idea or an object. So we're doing that all the time. We are. We are. And it's funny uh, when you look up words. Mm -hmm. So you got your definitions, but then you have your etymology which is totally different to watch the transformation of how words change over time. Yeah. Uh, they're almost opposite. If you look at a definition of a word, you look at the etymology and a lot of them will go between like maybe the 11th century to the 15th century of when the first known like meaning of the word is they're totally opposite meanings. And so it's like, wow, like how do we get different meanings? Because people's interpretations of the world around them change. Yeah. And so everything else ends up changing and yeah, I find it very interesting, right? Like even babies, how do they even understand what creation that's going around us? They don't understand words when they come out of the womb. So how do they even know what's taking place? They understand the vibration that's coming out of our mouth. Yeah. And so, you know, babies and uh, kids are, are great ways for us to like understand creativity, for us to see ourselves. Uh, they create at the highest levels until we put our ideas on them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I need to acknowledge all these people that have entered the space. Hello, everybody. So, so happy that you're here. Um, please put in any questions or comments into the chat box and we'll be able to see. And uh, very happy that you ha are joining this conversation. So, LaTroy, we're going to move on to question two because <laughs> we, we're just <laughs> going to go on and on and on. <laughs> um, and some of this we've already answered, but um, how do you incorporate creativity into your own life? I think it's done with intention. So part of my process every day for me to create is part of it's gratitude. You know, and I hear again, we're going to be talking about things that sound very cliche. Um, you might read in a lot of nonfiction books, um, self-help, self-development, um, hearing people say all the time um, and, and success, but it's gratitude, right? So I need to, I need to understand what's inside of my body. How do I get my mind to tell my body what to do? So I have to put my heart in the right place first. So that's why the gratitude is important for me. Mm -hmm. Second is intention. I got to be intentional. I have to know how to make a decision in the morning. Where is my destination today? Where am I going? And so the only way for to know where I'm going is I need to go inside myself and spend time with myself in the morning. So I will meditate. So my morning process, uh, my, my day routine, which when you think about a day routine, uh, for a lot of people, it might be just something you do in the morning and then you kind of abandon it the rest of the day. But if you look at the very word day, it means when the sun goes below the horizon. So that means your routine should be all day until the sun goes down. Mm -hmm. and so it's me giving to myself. I will do my meditation and my process is two to three hours in the morning. And that's what I give to myself every day. When I walk out my door with my backpack, with all my tools, I am actually going out to create. I'm not going to the job or going to the store to react or just to do, but it's this whole process of becoming for me. Mm -hmm. Who do I need to become? Who do I need to talk to? How uncomfortable can I make myself today to find out my creativity and what it's really capable of? Hmm. I love that. How uncomfortable can I make myself today? Because people don't strive for that often. Um, people don't want to be uncomfortable. Um, they want to kind of know what's going to happen. That's just a space uh, that a lot of people live in, don't you think? I do. I do. You know, and I think through your um, all of our gifts through that creativity that begins to express itself. You change, you change somebody with your creativity. You say you change one person and one family with your creativity. 
you have now changed a whole generation of families. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? And so it, it really is one person at a time. You could change the whole world pretty quick. Right. If you let your creativity express itself. Yeah. Yes. I'm thinking of years ago when I was a, um, when I taught uh, in, in a space, I was a resident artist in New York and uh, we, I was going to a school in Brooklyn and it was this one particular class. It was a kindergarten class and it was uh, an inclusion. So there was a special ed teacher and a general ed teacher. And uh, one of the teachers was a screamer. He just yelled at these poor kids all the time. And I went in for six weeks and once a week. Uh, so for 45 minutes. So not a long period of time, but enough to, you know, kind of start to get to know the kids. So it was just very, it was unpleasant for me to walk into within that time. And that was just 45 minutes once a week. So there was this one particular boy who was, um, he was a selective mute. So he never spoke during school. He had a very rough background and all this kind of stuff. And anyway, the the point of what I'm saying is he, there was a point in our lesson where I would do a, a presentation, a hands-on time, and then a sharing time. And we were working on collage this one particular day. And when it came to sharing time, he actually raised his hand to share. And the screamer teacher screamed at him and said, you want to talk? You never want to talk. Fine, go ahead, talk. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> like, what are you doing? What is your purpose? Like what? So in my head, I'm thinking, oh my God, okay, how do I handle this? This isn't my space. I'm in my twenties. You know, what am I going to do? So, um, I went over, I held up the boy's work. I don't even remember his name. And I, this was like 25 years ago. Um, but I remember it so clearly held up his work and said, uh, you know, who would like to tell him something that they like, blah, blah, blah. We did that. When it came time to clean up, I bent down next to him and I said, sweetie, what did you want to say? And he said, I like the color blue. Hmm. And I thought, you fucker, <laughs> <laughs> you shut this boy down because of this, because him wanting to share something. And I just hope that this boy, like, I hope he got the support that he needed. I hope that I know he had a whole story behind him, but I just say that because the whole domino effect, like, I hope at least that I was able to help by him being able to have a safe enough space to express what he wanted to say. It's what we hope for, but there, yeah, that's my story there. You know, before we head off to your next question, can we, can I just dive into that word create just a little bit more? Um, Please. You're just kind of, this whole conversation is just the, the hamster wheels turning a little bit. So yeah, good. Um, you know, so I want to go back to maybe one of the, the etymologies of the word create, which is arise. And so I think um, just based off societal um, norms and how we're raised, this is how things are supposed to be, the identity construct, that there's something inside of all of us that wants to arise. And if we don't allow it to, what ends up happening for a lot of us is this thing called depression. Mm -hmm. And when you break down that word depression, it means to depress, to push something down. Mm. And I feel that that's what we end up doing a lot of the time is we're pushing down the thing that wants to bring life to us and to the world. And we're constantly pushing it back down every single day to the point to where we forget we even have it anymore. Yeah. 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 I mean, when you said that, it's like we're depressing it because we're not expressing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, this is going to, this is definitely going to uh, engage my day different having this conversation. I haven't, I haven't had it outside of my house yet. And mm -hmm. so I got about th four meetings today and today's conversation and creativity, this energy that's going on right now in this space with everybody is definitely going to flow into my creativity today, Hollis. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm so glad because it's almost um, nine. Is it almost nine a.m. your time where you are? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I have an here. Um, I'm in New Jersey. It's uh, almost eleven. I just went out to water the flowers, and that's about it so far. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I've already been up since like four a.m. So I'm a I'm an early bird, that's right? Because uh, that my expression, the creativity inside, it wakes me up every day. Um, how many hours am I going to give myself to create? And so that's why I wake up so early. I love that. So while I'm remembering this now, I'm kind of putting it out there to the listeners. Think about that. How many hours are you putting out there to express? Like, what are you going to express today? What are you going to create today? And don't think about it too much. It's like we get so caught up in our heads of, oh, okay, well, how am I going to do that? It's like, don't think about the how. <laughs> Just do. Just kind of be in that moment. Like so much of what you've said earlier too, Latroy, is like planting those seeds and being in the moment, like planting your feet on the ground and being, just being and kind of watching what unfolds. Pretty powerful. It is, you know, uh, one of the things that they say, because I do a broadcast and one of the things they tell you is, uh, don't let there be silence, right? And it's funny, as you begin to have conversations, just a silence that, that took place, it makes, like, and that was maybe three, four seconds, right? It makes people so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The silence, you know, uh, you always got to be doing, doing, doing. And uh, sometimes I will intentionally do it because uh, then you can see what's really going on. You can see where people's thoughts are. Um, you can see the creation, what they're creating, right? Um, because uh, creation starts within. If you really want to find out about a person, you just throw some silence and some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I have to be honest, because when it was silent, I was like, did he hear me? <laughs> so, Because not being able to see, to see you, there's like not that body language. Um, I, I like the audio platform. I like both in being able, like a Zoom or whatever, where you're seeing the person and you can see the body language to be able to see when that pause is happening. But what I really realized is that I also like this format because it's really listening and waiting for that, taking the pause and learning the rhythm of the conversation. Yes, yes. So maybe I can ask you, Hollis, you know, I, I'm a question asker. You probably know that by now. Yeah. But creativity, you know, outside of everything you're doing, what is that for you? Creativity outside of everything that I'm doing. I don't know if there is an outside. I think it's just everything. I think it's, are, are you asking me like how I incorporate it into my life kind of thing? Yeah, is I'm not looking for any particular answer. I just kind of just having conversations all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think... I think it's really um, like we're saying, it's to me, I define creativity as your expression. It's your voice. And I think it just comes through in everything that we do. And when I chose to leave the classroom um, after teaching for 30 years um, and just kind of approach it in a different way, when you use the word adulting before, I realized that it's like wanting to work with adults to to not be so um, caught up in 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 being an adult and all the responsibility and being more playful and getting more connected to things that actually light you up and bring you joy and happiness. So I think I've just kind of found it. It's kind of, it's, it's everything. Like we've been saying, it's just creation is, it's creation. It's happening all the time. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful uh, for people to come to that realization. You know, I, I believe I'm a firm believer that the money, cause that's it's a real conversation. It's a, it's a creativity, right? Um, but I believe money is a part of us. It's not something that's out there um, because you're talking about worth and things like that. And, you know, I mean, like how long can you live doing the thing that you don't like to do? How long yeah. can you really do that and be happy? Yeah. 
Yeah. It's you, you get some people just can and they just keep going and others you just get burnt. And um, yeah, it's that whole depression and that whole spiral down. And yes, yeah, so let's move on to question three and wrapping it up. And it's stuff that we've touched on um, already, but putting a bow on it almost is, so why is creativity important? You know, for me is I want to get to the end of my life knowing that people knew that I was here, that they knew Lee Troy Woods was on this planet. And so how do I do that? For me, that means my creativity has to serve as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. If I could save as many people from themselves through my creativity and help their creativity in that process, then people will know that I was on this planet forever. And that's my goal is to save generations of people from themselves. And through that process, this is what makes the world better. Save generations of people from themselves. Yeah. You know, so go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, you know, cause if you would ask me this four years ago, I would have gave you an answer that was tied uh, around stuff. You know, I want to live in this huge house, which I still do, but it's different, right? Because I'm coming from a different place. It would have been the trips, the cars. Uh, that would have been my answer, you know, having a great business. But it's different, right? When you think about it, all the stuff ends up in the garbage at the end of the day. When you die, the stuff doesn't even matter. Your creation is all that's going to be left. Yeah. 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 It on a personal note, like it makes me sad to even kind of think of this, but um, my uncle, um, my father's been gone for 18 years and um, he had two siblings, you know, my aunt, and my uncle, she was gone prior to my dad. And uh, my uncle, I think he passed away maybe like two, three years ago. I'm not even sure. We kind of disconnected from each other, but um my aunt didn't even have a funeral for him. There was, there was no acknowledgement of his life. <laughs> and that's just so sad. And the sad thing is, is that probably nobody would have really come because they didn't create a life where they were, like you're saying, being of service, of, of having this mission or this goal to be there for others and for betterment. Yeah, you know, this conversation is hitting home, right? Uh, I think we've, in this short hour, been able to go down this rabbit hole enough to maybe bring some awareness to this conversation and why creativity, why you're, these conversations you're creating um, in this space are so important. Yeah, thank you. Please tell people, LaTroy, how people can find you and get connected and have more to do with you? So the social media platform is very new to me because I'm very old school, right? I like the face-to-face -face with people. But because of COVID, yeah. I realized how much opportunity there was to connect with people. And so um, I, I jumped on board um, with looking at COVID as this huge opportunity that life is trying to get our attention and to connect to people at those levels. So uh, you can reach me on my broadcast. Uh, the best way for the broadcast is through the app. It's the Fed by Ravens Media. Um, on there, you'll just click on podcast. Go to the way to the top where we talk about the process. It's never reaching the top. The top is an illusion. The stuff is an illusion, but it's the process of who do you need to become to get the stuff. And once you can learn that process, this inner process that takes place, then that's where all the magic happens. And that's where you begin to live. Um, so that's how you can reach me on um, the way to the top on that podcast. I have a Facebook group called Internal Awakening. Um, you know, turning that switch on, having conversations where people can have a safe place to express themselves. Um, and so that's a great way to get into a platform where you can maybe just listen to a conversation if you're not comfortable, um, but to see what's going on with, we're all going through the same thing, right? We're all scared. Um, we all don't know how to express ourselves. 
but to be in a place where you can actually do that. And so that's why the Facebook group is created. Um, and right now, those are the only really two besides my Facebook, Lee Troy, L-E-T-R-O-Y, D, Woods, W-O-O-D-S at Facebook. Um, my website's in the making right now. So, and that's, there's a story in that process also, uh, Holly, is uh, one of my side gigs is I deliver papers to the, to the base for the military uh, every Wednesday night. And mm-hmm. through the platform, right, of listening to other people and their stories and their creativity, somebody said, you know, so my, my associate uh, is going to be on this primetime network with this guy. And I got to listen on to the conversations with this billionaire, right? And he's talking about this idea of, I have people that I work with that are going, because my buddy needs a website. He needs to revamp it. Mm -hmm. People I work with are going to either give it to me for free or they're going to give me a discount. Now I'm thinking, wait a minute, like money's not even an issue, but you're talking about discount and free. Why would I pay for it if you're not going to pay for it? So it kind of got my imagination, creativity going. So I was like, you know what? I had got a quote for a website and it was for like 1800. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm actually going to get my website for free. So I could do that by creating an idea in my head. An idea could get it for me. So I'm doing dishes the next day. I listened to the podcast over again and the light bulb came on. The switch turned on. This is how I'm going to do it. I messaged them, say, hey, can we talk tomorrow? So in the conversation, I was like, you're a startup company, so how about we do this? Let's help each other win. Because this is what this whole networking thing is. The dots in life are people. The dots are people. It's not the things we do, but the dots are people, and that's how we get to the thing that leads to the thing. I will give you a shout-out on the radio and return the proposal that you gave me for the website. You'll give it to me. And they said yes. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) This is why creativity is so important. You can build the life you want every single day. Yeah. And you weren't afraid to ask. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you weren't fearful of, well, what will they say and how will I say it? And I mean, I don't know if you went through that process at all, but but you did. You asked and there we go. People want to help you. They do, Hollis. You just don't realize it. And because I keep... I'm comfortable in my skin now. The outside doesn't scare me anymore. Doesn't mean that I'm not going to go through my fears and stuff, right? But I have a better understanding of it now. Yeah. Which is a perfect way to wrap everything up is being comfortable in your own skin. Acknowledging that. How comfortable are you in your own skin? Yeah, this is a really great conversation. Latroy, I am so grateful to you for taking this hour to chat with me and um, so much insight. Yeah, definitely the trajectory of the day. Um, yeah, a little different because of the conversation. Well, I want to thank you for your time because time's important, right? It's something that we all don't have very much of. So I want to thank you for your time, everybody that listened today, for me to share myself with you. So thank you. Yeah, I'm so grateful. And we have a nice amount of listeners on today. So um, really appreciate you taking this hour because just like LaTroy just said is that, yeah, time is time is precious. So taking this time with us um, really means a lot. So this space is really all about inspiring each other, sharing and connecting. So please like, follow and share so we can just spread the word and get it out there and empower each other empower each other to just share stories because we need we need connection we need connection and it just makes us makes us happy and who doesn't want to be happy so um i wish you a wonderful morning afternoon evening and whatever part of the world you are and look forward to talking to you again soon so goodbye everybody all right thank you i stand my gratitude to everyone thank you bye bye